Don't know if you should splurge on a high-end blow dryer brush or save money on a cheaper one. Well, today you're in luck because I'm reviewing the Dry Bar Double Shot Blow Dryer against the Revlon One Step Dryer. And I definitely have a clear winner. So keep watching to find out which one is right for you. So, I've always been curious about how round blow dryer brushes would work on my hair. So last month I bought the Dry Bar Double Shot Blow Dryer. I used it, I did a full review. Um, at the end of my review, I thought it was, you know, it was fine. It did what it was supposed to do. I was satisfied with it. But I was curious on how a lower cost blow dryer that was similar would work. So I purchased the Revlon One Step Blow Dryer. And today I'm gonna compare it against the Dry Bar Brush. Now, I'm all about luxurious items and, you know, treating myself well and buying high-end items. But anytime I can save a little bit of money, I do. In order to purchase the high-end item, it has to be worth it for me. So, hopefully by the end of this video, uh, we'll be able to determine if the Revlon is good enough and if we could save a little bit of coin. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to... Uh, dry the left side of my hair with the dry bar brush and the right side of my hair with the Revlon brush But first let's talk about each dryer So the dry bar claims that it will give you a smooth shiny blowout with tons of volume in one quick simple step The Revlon claims to create volume and detangle your hair The dry bar is a bit longer with a smoother handle the Revlon handle is not as smooth, but it has um, a different type of grip. I think the Revlon has maybe more of an ergonomic grip because I found that it's easier to hold when it's wet. They both claim to be ergonomic, which I think they pretty much are. And they are both are lightweight. They weigh about the same. Uh, the Revlon brush is 1100 watts and the dry bar is 1140 watts. Both have three temperature settings. The dry bar has cool, uh, medium, and hot. And the Revlon has cool, uh, low, cool, low, and high. The dry bar brush uses ionic technology, which means that it will give less frizz and more shine. And the Revlon has ceramic coating technology. And this protects your hair from heat styling by distributing the heat more evenly. It also preserves your hair's natural moisture and shine. Uh, and it claims to quickly dry your hair also. So as you can see, both dryers have similar claims. Um, they look, they look and feel the same. They're the same weight, like I mentioned. They both have two types of bristles the nylon and the tufted. Um, both have similar air vents. The dry bar has more vertical type air vents and the Revlon has more kind of diagonal, horizontal. I don't know if you can see that. But in terms of the width and the size, they're pretty much the same. So let's see how they stand up against each other. I'm starting with the Revlon dryer on the right side of my hair, which is my more coily side. As always, when I blow dry, I detangle my hair first and divide it into six sections. In my hair are the same products that I used when I reviewed the dry bar brush. The on and off switch on the Revlon was much easier to turn than the dry bar one. Although they both have about the same wattage, the Revlon one feels hotter. It didn't take much time to finish this first section and it turned out nice and straight. As you can see, the dryer is gliding through my hair easily and combing right through my tangles. Although the Revlon bristles feel firm to the touch, during the drying process they felt softer. And I think it's because there's a lot less of the tufted bristles on this one. And when I finished drying this side of my hair, it looked pretty straight and felt soft. And it took only 13 minutes to dry. Now for the dry bar side. 
This one also glides through my hair easily without snagging my tangles. It seems like the bristles are a better quality. They're not as stiff as the Revlon, but they're more of the tufted bristles. The drying experience felt slightly better, probably because it's not as hot and the bristles seem more flexible. Now for the dry bar, it took longer for my roots to dry. This dryer recommends doing a rough dry first with another dryer before using this one. Yeah, the Revlon one is definitely hotter. So the result was that overall my hair had volume and shine with both of the dryers. I didn't have much breakage with either one. As you can see, the Revlon side is straighter and the dry bar side is frizzier. And the dry bar side took an additional four minutes to dry. All right, so overall, both dryers did what they're supposed to do. They're so close in performance that I would have to go with the Revlon because it's cheaper. Um, I wouldn't recommend spending the extra money for the dry bar one. Um, for me, at least, the Revlon performed better in terms of making my hair straighter, less frizzier, and then it took less time to dry my hair. So I would save that extra $100, get the Revlon one, and put that money towards something else. Now, if you're someone who has thinner hair, or maybe your hair doesn't tolerate, you know, higher heat, maybe you'd go with the dry bar one. But for me, the Revlon worked just fine. Well, there you go. I hope this video was helpful for you with making a decision on which blow dryer is right for you. I'll link them both in the description box. If you're still unsure, check out this video of my full review of the dry bar brush.